All right, Pablo, today I want to talk about fungibility. Fungi <laughs> I, I, I want to talk about fungibility. I, I'm, I'm, I'm already seeing this, this going Oof. the wrong way. <laughs> I'm already seeing this like going all oh, right. I'm like, going to disappear is... in flames. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, you know what you can do? You can like you can like not be in the chair and then I'll put you yeah, in the chair. Woof, yeah. Woof. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. Idea. So on my pillar wallet. Cool. I have ether and tokens, and recently someone sent me a crypto kitty. All, the, all those ones. <laughs> Somebody sent me a non-fungible token, an ERC-721. Right. A crypto kitty. It's mine, and it is the only crypto kitty like that in the world. Okay. I guess someone could make a duplicate, but it wouldn't have that address, so right. it wouldn't be that. Like token. the metadata is unique to. So them. let's talk about fungibility and non-fungibility. All right, let's do it. I thought it would be a good time to discuss why do we use the word fungibility? Uh -huh. What does fungibility even mean? I, I have my guesses, but uh, go ahead. Well, it means substitutability. All right. Right? Can you, can you substitute a random child for my, for my children and my family? I could try, but I think I, you would notice. I don't yeah. think that's gonna work, right? So, but, but, it doesn't mean unique, and I wanted to show you that because some people say, well, why not use the word unique? Mm. And the answer is, and it's interesting, right here, what are these two things? These are both 20 pound notes. We live in, we live in the UK. These are 20 pound notes, and are they identical? For me, yeah, they look the same. They're not, right? Okay. Why? Because they have- Oh, they have the, their own codes. They, oh, yeah, they have their own serial numbers All here. Right. And there's, so actually, these things are unique, right? Unless you're counterfeiting, mm. which would be a way of trying to reproduce something unique. Mm -hmm. But these are unique and yet they're fungible. No one cares if right. who has which one. Right, right. right. They're completely can... fungible. Nobody says, no, I want that one. No, it's a, maybe a five-year-old. It's not a collectible. It's not a collectible. <laughs> it's just a uh, non-fungible token, right. Right? right? Now, is this good for anything? Can you turn it into the central bank for any, the, the, the Bank of England for anything? Well, yeah. What, what are you gonna get? Another 20? <laughs> yeah, nothing, <laughs> right. It's just made up, it's just made out of thin air. Yeah. Yeah, these don't really have any basis. In reality, they're made up, but that's cool. They're still, you can still exchange them for a cup of coffee we've, at Starbucks. We've, we've agreed, we've agreed that they're so, worth something. So, but th these are unique and yet fungible. Right. What are about these guys? Now these are each one penny, I think, yeah. here in the UK. Two pence. Two, two, two pence? pence? Two yeah. pence. Yeah. These are two pence thingies. They have a two on them. Yeah. And they are, they don't have any special serial numbers. So they are completely fungible. They're totally fungible. They're not unique, although one is darker than the other. But, but if one of them was under my pillow for my seventh birthday or my tooth fairy or my mother gave it to me and it's special then it might not be so fungible so yeah. there's degrees of fungibility and that's what i want to talk about okay so for example let's just look at a bunch of things that are that are fungible if you have a litter of puppies and there's seven of them are the puppies fungible i mean do, am I attached to them? Pretty <laughs> much. I mean, they, one may look different. One yeah. may have a black tail or something, and then he looks a little yeah. different. But they're pretty much. But yeah. they're pretty close to fungible. Are people fungible? Depends. Yes, it depends. If you're an army corporal and you're commanding thousands of troops, then more or less. That's true. Right. If you're if you're a school principal and you have thousands of kids, well, one leaves, one comes. As far as you're concerned, they're fungible, right? Yeah. In a large company with twenty thousand employees, most many of the employees are more or less fungible. It's kind so, of sad. <laughs> well, so it's kind of a, it's, de it's by degrees. Right. 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 Now let's let's think about apartments. Okay. Are apartments fungible? Well, if they are all look the same, sure. If they're all on the same level and they have the yeah. same view yeah. and they're next to each other, then and they have the same layout. Yeah. Why not? Pretty much, mm -hmm. right? Unless somebody happens to have a preference. What about this? Is this fungible? Pretty much. I mean, if there, I, I, I would figure there are many equal to that one. Now, that this has a serial thing. number. Yes. Right, but there right. are many, right. and I would don't mind, you know, if it's in the same condition. So now we have something called provenance. Okay. 
Provenance means the history of the thing. Word of the day. And its provenance describe, can often contribute to the value of a collectible. Okay. Right? So whether it's, if it's non-fungible, which a collectible is, mm -hmm. uh, a Picasso painting is non-fungible, right? But the provenance matters because if it was stolen, it's worth much more, much less than if it's not stolen. And if it's unclear what the provenance is, it's worth less than if it's crystal clear who owned it before. Right. For example, if my father had given this to me as a heir family heirloom and said, okay. you must give this to your son. Then it's provenance. Now it's not fungible right. anymore. Right. right, right. Right? Now let's talk about Bitcoin or Ether. Okay. All right? Now, are Bitcoin and Ether fungible? Yeah. Yes, they are. Why? What makes them fungible? I mean, if you have one Bitcoin mm -hmm. and I have another Bitcoin mm -hmm. and we can trade those Bitcoin, we don't. It doesn't still, matter. Still, the doesn't same. matter at all. That's right. In fact, there's no such thing as a Bitcoin. You realize that? Okay. In other words, the difference between 0.9 Bitcoin and 1.1 Bitcoin, it's all just fluid. Bitcoin is like milk. It's like water. There is no such thing as 1.000 Bitcoin. You you could have it, mm. but you would call it one. You call it one Bitcoin, not a Bitcoin. In other words, you don't have 10 Bitcoins. Mm. You have 10 Bitcoin. Because why? Because the number 10 is just in the ledger. Right. It could be 9.999. It's about the same to you. Mm -hmm. But it, and it doesn't matter. The, there's no wholeness to right. Bitcoin right. at all. It's just like a fluid. Okay. Right. But there's an interesting thing about Bitcoin. If you wanted to sell Bitcoin on an exchange and then take for dollars, let's say, or euros, and take those dollars and put them into your bank account. Well, let's say you wanted to sell a million dollars worth of Bitcoin and take the, put them into your bank account. Mm -hmm. Now what happens, the bank has to decide if they're going to accept that. They yeah. have to comply with AML, mm -hmm. anti-money laundering and anti-terrorist financing laws. Mm -hmm. And they're required to ask you, where'd you get that one million dollars? Right. And well, the answer is, well, I sold some Bitcoin. Well, they may say, well, this is a large amount. We need to know where did you get the Bitcoin? Where did the Bitcoin come from? <laughs> ah, that's provenance. And if the Bitcoin so came... So provenance is like the history of the, of the, the asset. The history of the asset. Okay. So if the Bitcoin came from a miner right. directly, and that's showable on the ch chain, then certain exchanges will value that, let's say at full value, but if that Bitcoin came from Venezuela or North Korea or Zimbabwe, mm. something like that, something maybe associated with an address that we know is associated with some drug cartel, now the bank is not going to accept that. They're going to block the transfer. So should we not trust Pablo Escobar? So wait, okay. that Bitcoin then that is of questionable uh, past history is worth less in the market. It's right. actually worth less because of the provenance right. of the Bitcoin. And so we have this continuum again of fungibility to the degree that the ones that are most questionable are worth quite a bit less than the ones that are cleanest right. and least terrorist and drug money and all that stuff that are worth, let's say, say full value. So, so, so wait. They'll so turn it away. In that way, in that sense, like in the sense of provenance, proving provenance, uh, would then a cryptocurrency be way better than money? Because uh, being on the blockchain is uh, easier to track, right? We don't know because mm. there you can wash it, you can you can run it through a, a what do you call it, a mixer. Okay. Mix it through lots of things. And so there are a lot of tricky ways that people use to wash both dollars uh -huh. and cryptocurrencies. Right. So it depends on what the anti-money laundering uh, um, officer at the bank decides. It's his call. Okay. It's his license. He's given the license and he's given discretionary authority to decide whether something's unusual and whether the source of funds is legitimate. Right. And so, and different countries even apply this differently. Mm. So you might be able to walk into a bank somewhere else and get the same, same suitcase of cash or the same Bitcoin okayed, whereas another bank won't take it. It's up to the bank. Okay. It's not universal. It's right. all relative. I'm trying to show that all of this is on a spectrum that's relative, right? Now, there's a stronger form of, of fungibility. You may not have known. You may not have known that. No. no. There's a normal form of fungibility. Stronger fungibility. 
there is a normal fungibility and then there's strong fungibility. Right. So strong fungibility says that that 10 one pounds, or say four or five pound notes, can be exchanged for 120. Or right. 10 tens can be exchanged for 100. Ten ones can be exchanged for a ten. That it's right. exchangeable in different quantities for a larger quantity unit. Mm. Now that's certainly the case in cryptocurrencies. You could get ten ether from ten different people, and if they all wanted a ten ether to one account, you could do that. Right? So it's the same with money. Mm. Right? It's, it's strongly fungible. Mm. Money is. Now let's let's think about diamonds. Diamonds, smallish diamonds, say a quarter of a carat diamonds, that roughly have the same color, carat and, and cut, and clarity, they're fungible. Mm. They, you know, they don't cost that much, and there are millions of them, and if you don't get one, you get another one. At the size of about a carat, you have to look more into the details, but there's a lot of diamonds that will substitute pretty easily for most people mm -hmm. at the same level of quality. And so 10 of those, do they equal a 10 carat diamond? Can you trade 10 one carat diamonds for a 10 carat diamond? I'm gonna guess no. No, no, the person who has a 10 carat diamond has no interest in 10 one carat diamonds. A 10 right. carat diamond is quite unusual. It's the same with apartments. Can you trade four apartments for a penthouse? With a, say there's four times as much square footage? No. No, you can't. So many things that are fungible in the normal version of fungibility are not strongly fungible. Right. Right? Now, CryptoKitties would be a good example. It, there's, there might be a CryptoKitty that's worth $100, and there might be a bunch of CryptoKitties that are worth 10. But the $100 CryptoKitty owner is not likely to accept 10 $10 CryptoKitties in exchange. Yeah. Right? Yep. That's not going to be seen as an easy, even trade. And in fact, what we know about this, you know, from, from, from economics is that the thing that is larger and worth more is worth more per unit. So that the, 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 the penthouse is worth more per square foot. Right. Might be the same number of square feet, but it's actually worth more per square foot. And the diamond is worth more per carat. The larger diamond is worth more per carat right. than the smaller diamond. And that goes at all sides, all, all the way down the scale to tiny diamonds. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's strong fungibility. Right. And as we get more and more collectibles in the wallet, we'll find probably more interesting examples of maybe gaming assets or uh, things that are heirlooms or things that have specific meaning to people. And we'll start to encounter more fungibility issues. And so I just thought it would be fun to explore that. Nice, that's very nice. That's Any very questions? Nice. Well, a bunch of them, but uh, I'll save them from another video. We'll do it. <laughs>